Hi and welcome to my channel. So my name is Nienke de Glas. I'm a clinical epidemiologist and this is the first video of a series on videos on predictive research. So in this short introduction, I will teach you the concept of predictive research and I will talk a bit about what the differences are with causal research. So let's get started. So basically you could say that there are two types of studies. There are predictive studies and there are causal studies. And the main difference is that in studies in which we want to study causality, we're looking at a factor that is causally related with a certain outcome. So let's say you want to study whether smokers have a higher risk of lung cancer, an example I've used in several other videos before. That is an example of a causal study. However, in predictive research, it doesn't really matter whether factors that you're finding are causally related to the outcome. So imagine a situation where all smokers in a population wear white socks and all people who do not smoke wear black socks. Just a hypothetical situation. So let's say now we want to study if white socks are a predictor for mortality. You will find a quite strong association because it's mediated through smoking, as you can imagine. However, if you would ask people with white socks to change them to black, of course their mortality risk does not change. So this is not a causally related factor, but it can still be very relevant if you want to predict outcome. So this is a major difference between predictive research and causal research. So in previous videos I have talked about confounding. And it's good to realize that confounding only plays a role in studies where you want to study causal effects. So Keep in mind that in predictive research, confounding is not a factor and it also does not matter whether there are confounders in your model. In fact, confounders might even improve your model and they might improve the prediction. So this is an example of a prediction model from the field that I work in, geriatric oncology. And this is a prediction model that aims to predict the risk of treatment toxicity of chemotherapy in older adults with cancer. So as you can see, you can enter here a lot of different variables, which are the predictors, for example, the age of a patient, the type of cancer, but also some geriatric variables. So how fit is a patient? What problems does he or she have? And then if you enter all these factors, the model will give you a risk estimate on how high the risk of severe toxicity is of chemotherapy. So here you can see that the patient has a very high risk of toxicity as it is totally on the right side. And in your discussions with your patient, you can use this type of data to discuss whether chemotherapy is such a good idea. If someone told me that I had a 95% risk of severe adverse events of chemotherapy, I would think twice before I took it. So prediction models have many different applications. So in medical studies, we tend to use this a lot to predict treatment effects. And it, these can be survival outcomes or response rates to certain treatments, but also adverse events, so complications risks or toxicity of treatment, and it can really help physicians and patients to together to make a good treatment decision for that individual patient. But other applications can also be risks of disease, so it can help to estimate the chance for a certain patient to develop a disease so that you can screen for that disease, for example. So these are just a few examples from my own area of expertise, which is medicine. But of course, also outside the field of medicine, there are many, many different applications of prediction models. So that was the first introduction to predictive research. And if you want to learn more, keep watching. See you next time.